Let her rip. On your mark, get set, go! Rip it. Let her rip. I'm gonna start. Give me all your raw impressions, your thoughts, your words, your time, all about communication. Yes, speak your mind. Give me all your raw. I've always wanted to write a song called um, You Don't Have to Be a Dick About It. <laughs> but I, wanted to, I, I don't know what it would be. It's you should like, write that for Raw Impressions, one of your the, originals. You don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just have this whole thing like, we were all up and thinking about us and then I was, but you don't have to be a dick about it. They're like, just dick about it. And that would be the name of the song is Dick About It. I think that's kind of like the ultimate when you just had it with someone. Yeah. God, you don't have to be <laughs> dick about it. I'm like dick about it. I've, I've thought I've, this honestly has been in my brain for a very long time. At this point, decades, because now when you look back, you think something happened like, oh, that was a couple of years ago. No, it was a couple of decades ago. Oh. That's where we're at. God. You don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> you don't have to be a dick about it. I, I would like to say that I think that should be the full title because I don't, I'm not into the abbreviation. I think it should be that super long. Oh, no. You don't have to be a dick about it. Well, it could be, it could be in quote, it could be in parentheses. You don't have, have to, to be, be a dick, dick about, about it. it. Right. <laughs> you don't have to be a dick about it. Cause I like dick about it. You know? <laughs> You don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> and then, you know, there's no confusing what that means. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no one ever says, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm sorry I had my seat too far back. I'm going to move it up now. But you didn't have to be a dick about it. It's like being on tour. Mm. You don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> uh... I like that. I'm really in in interested in this song and I'm... I'm anxiously awaiting it now. Well, it's almost like the Raw Impressions theme in that it's, uh, I, I haven't finished the song. There's a song there. Oh, there is definitely. But I'm really afraid to finish it oh. because there's so much potential. Mm. You know what I mean? There's so much potential in the Raw Impressions theme as a completed song. Yeah. That I have, I have yet to complete it simply because it's too intimidating. And also with Dick About It, yeah, the song that I've been... Yes. Thinking about writing for the last three decades. <laughs> I'm also like, I'm like, boy, because it's got to be perfect. Each verse has to be perfect. It has to lead up. It has to like, it starts off a little, little low and then just, but you don't have to be a dick about it. I have an idea about that that would maybe take off some of the pressure for both the Raw Impressions full theme song and Dick About It. <laughs> <laughs> is that you can think of them almost as maybe part of like a trilogy. It could be like part one. You don't have to be a dick about it. So it's okay if this song isn't like fully complete, if it's just the beginning of the story of that song, maybe there's part one. You don't have to be a dick about it. And then maybe the next time you'll have another version of the song that's slightly different. It doesn't have to be just one time. It could be a whole album, a five song EP of just different versions of Dick About It. <laughs> <laughs> Don't limit yourself to just one. Well, Dick About It. That has so much potential. Well, I mean, you start with Dick About It um, and then parentheses demo. Could just make a demo. I make so, are you saying you don't like that idea of mine, where you can have multiple versions of variations of the same song, Dick About It? I'm going to try not to be a dick about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, I don't think that's a great idea. Why not? 
Why? Yeah. Dick about it, the EP. <laughs> Well, it's like one of those no, things. No, I'm like, just simply saying where you don't have to have just one song. This idea that you have to write the one great song, Dick About It. It could be multiple songs, Dick About It. Oh. Yeah, but I, but the song is very... I can hear the song in my head, and it slowly builds, and then goes... But you don't have to be a dick about it. I mean, like, it, it builds. Mm-hmm. You know, it I starts understand. off with... You know, sure. where, I'm not confused about that. I'm just simply saying you could maybe have multiple variations if you ever want to take the pressure off yourself. But you're just saying, no, it's got to be one time only. I've got to make it perfect one time. I've got one shot at this. That's it. Well, that's, that's true. Yeah. I don't know. Open I mean, your mind. Who cares? Open your mind, dick. Come on. I could do like... You don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> Hello. I mean, really. Think outside of your little box there, Lou. <laughs> Get out of your head. My box is getting smaller, Adele. I don't know. I'm just trying to say, expand your I'm mind. I'm getting old and my box is getting smaller. Whoa. Doesn't that happen? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, be willing to be open-minded. I think I'm pretty fucking open-minded. Well, you weren't about that. Well, hey, I'm a seasoned, <laughs> I'm a songwriter. Oh, he's a professional hey. musician. He's got all the answers. I'm a songwriter. Yeah. Did you know that Don Henley once wore a shirt that said songwriter on it? Mm. He often, you know, he, he just goes beyond. Mm -hmm. He's like, I will be a dick about it. <laughs> I think As a that, matter of fact, because yeah. at, the, at, the, at that time. I'm afraid of you even saying Don Henley and dick about it in the same. I'm afraid that we're going to have to edit that out because he's going to come after us. Oof. That's true. He's litigious. He is. You got to You got to watch even calling a Henley shirt. I shouldn't even have said that. He's probably yeah. got his lawyers like writing up the paperwork right now. Coming yeah. after us. He probably, he has, like, now that AI is there, there's probably a Henley AI that just... Don't stop saying it, goddammit. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> He's got Henley do AI. Do not mention... Don any Henley, mention... you do. Any mention of mm. Henley, whether the shirt... Don or, or Henley. Yeah. Or, or the, the great songwriter. Mm -hmm. Great, great songwriter. Fucking Ma amazing. Great. Great. Um, Maybe not amazing? I heard Life in the Fast Lane... Several times uh, over the last week, like last weekend, maybe when we were going to SLC, you and me, <laughs> I think I heard, I think I heard life in the fast lane just ambiently several times. And I'm like, that song. Yeah. It's fucking good. <laughs> they knew all the right people. They took all, their, all the right pills. They threw outrageous parties. They play, paid heavenly bills. Mm. They had one thing in common. They were good and bad. She said, faster, faster, the lights are turning red. Yeah. This is a, this is a, well, this is a free, we are going free on this episode. This is free form. It's, there's got to be let some. Let it rip. It's let it rip because. We're letting it rip today. Today is one of my, today is a day. The kind of day yeah. that is my least favorite fucking day. It is. It's the day before a tour. And not just like a tour tour. It's like a tour for like... Big tour. Kind of a big tour. Yeah. The longest one in a while. And 26 it's, days. And it's like over a large... And I have to go over a very large body of water to get to the place for the tour to begin. Yeah. Which I find stressful. Yeah. I don't know. I did the Austria. Run other country. I, I don't know why. It's so stressful. Yeah, I think it just, I think it's because it's like all this stuff right now, like it's the end of the school year and summer starting and, and then this tour to me also signals the beginning of like heavy touring because it's like this tour and then the folk implosion tour and then maybe just more little tours and then you leave in September before you know it for like the big, a big tour. flaming Lips, the, Weezer, Dinosaur, flaming, Junior, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's like yeah. tour, 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 tour. That's true. The, the one, the big um, the big uh, arena tour. I know. With, happening in the fall. With the Weeze. 
<sighs> so much. So we both get kind of tweaked. We got a little twerky, a little tweaky the day before. It, it rubs off on me. I feel agitated. I've got a twerky. headache. Twerky. Twerky. You want to get twerky? What's that? Twerking? Twerking? I was like twerking and tweaking. That's... Twerking is... Is that where you shake your but, butt in the air? Yes. Is it... Okay. That would really help me out. You want me to shake my butt in the air? <laughs> <laughs> if we... If you I'll were do to that after we get off the treat, podcast. <laughs> if, you, if you were to treat me to some like, you know, extended twerking <laughs> while I'm packing, while uh -huh. I'm looking for fucking adapters... Breathe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the good thing is, mm -hmm. I'm taking the daughter. Mm -hmm. The on oldest tour. child is going with I'm on taking, tour. Yeah, she hasn't. She hasn't been to Europe since she was very young. She spent the first two years of her life being shuttled around on tour buses and planes all over the Western world. Wow. Well, then... And she hasn't been back since then. She's 19. It's exciting. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. I am pretty excited about what I really... And this is something that I miss a lot on tour, and I miss about having not... Having someone with you that Having you someone love. with me that I can mm -hmm. see. Like, I was able to see... I was able to see Salt Lake City through your eyes. Yeah. Oh. Which was great. Mm-hmm. Because you were, you were seeing it. You were like, wow, those mountains are beautiful. The mountains are... Totally flipping beautiful, beautiful. And we went, we went to the whole like Mormon center yeah. of the universe thing and looked at yeah. that. We and were I got in to the see bubble. that. Through. We were in the bubble. We, we, well, we didn't pierce the bubble. No, they certainly wouldn't allow us to pierce it. No, but we were walking around mm -hmm. near. We were near, near the bubble. The, we were, we well, were. We were like bouncing on the bubble. You know, we we didn't go in the bubble, but. We were in Salt Lake City, which is, you know, that's the Mormon land. That's where they live. I mean, not all of them. I mean, what am I talking about? Anyway, Mormons, Mormons live are everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> Mormons are everywhere. Hello to our Mormon lisper listeners. Yeah. Um, I hope there are some. We were in. We were in Salt Lake City. Have you ever been there? Is that weird? What? Is that a generalization that all Mormons have been to Salt Lake City? Yes. At some point in their life. Yeah, I'm sure that's a total generalization. Let's stop talking about that. Okay. <sighs> anyway, so, yeah. We were going to be a little unscripted, a little raw, a little, a little rugged. I saw a video of Kevin Costner. Uh, he just premiered one of his films at Cannes Film Festival. And I watched a video of him thanking the crowd after they gave him like a seven minute standing ovation for his film. It's been like this passion project for him. I think it's part of a series of films about the American West. And oh, um, I have to say, I love Kevin Costner for that genre. I think he he just got that so right. He was like, this is my place. I know my lane. I'm going to really dig into it. And there you go. And I just thought, wow, neat. I kind of want to watch it now. Starting with Dances with Wolves. I know. And you know what? I think he's kind of handsome. What? We just <laughs> we just saw this. I I'm, do. I'm just going to go off. I do. I'm I think Kevin a, Costner's kind of handsome. I'm going to be a dick about this. Okay. What was that fucking movie that we watched on the plane? Oh, oh, well, we were just talking about, oh, no, oh. he was not handsome in that. I mean, Kevin, if you ever listen to Raw Impressions, forgive me, but you've looked better. You looked really handsome at your Cannes Film Festival. Thank you speech. Uh, we watched a movie called Rumor Has It on the airplane. Fuck that movie. Oof. Fuck okay. it. Yeah, say it. Say it loud. Fuck that movie. Fuck Even it. with that stellar cast of Shirley MacLaine, Kevin Costner, Jennifer Aniston, who you and I adore and love she's one of our favorite actresses and I, she couldn't even save it she could not carry that whole damn film i have a theory i'm developing a theory yes about jennifer aniston ah okay mm -hmm. what is it it's not that she's an alien okay it's not that it's not that she's an a alien well she is she's like 
been alive forever. <laughs> like in her eyes, in her eyes. Oh, yes. <laughs> she somehow has the knowledge of the ages in her eyes. Mm. She has a weariness where she's like, this is another go around. Another go around. Yeah. Another century. She can realistically display fatigue when her character is feeling just worn down. And it's it, it, it it's like a fatigue of like all of humanity. I Gosh, really... Jen Aniston, is that too much? what you carry, my goodness. Is it too much to say? I, I feel... Know. And it's like... Jennifer Aniston is carrying the weight of humanity and, in her eyes. And she seems... Strangely, the same age in every role she plays. Wow. Yeah. Every, That's true. That's true. Even in Friends. Right. And you, and on top of that, you completely believe that she's this fucking made up character. Even like a shitty character. Yeah. Even maybe not a character that wasn't that well conceived or written for. Wow. She's kind of got that Frances McDormand thing. Yeah. Although I'm not sure Frances McDormand has been alive forever. Uh-huh. You know, uh -huh. I think that she actually huh. she's got this lifetime and she's in and she's in a lifetime. However, wow. Jennifer right. Aniston. Yes. I I just don't know. Huh. She's a part of a, a cadre. <laughs> <laughs> Are you drunk right now? What's I, happening? I am not. Okay. I am Feel dry I'm oh, dry wow. drunken. I'm high. I'm I'm just Twerk. You're raging. I'm twerk. You should twerk for me. That'd be good for you. You know, like get a little exercise. We'll twerk for each other later. Although I don't want you to do that because you could throw out your back. But I also have. I have the flattest ass. F. Yes. You do. F, F. You have like a. It's like a negative ass. It's like a minus. <laughs> I have a negative ass. Yeah. Yep. Subtraction. There's no butt. <sighs> Yep. Speaking of well, my anyway, ass. What, speaking of what, my ass. Did you want to say any more about Jennifer Aniston and that rumor? No. Or in that rumor? That ha that movie. Rumor has it. It sucked. Okay. And um, that's a review. Our review is zero out of five stars, one out of five stars. And, and, and to my horror. Yes. To my horror. Like, you know, 20% into that movie. Adele and I, we did a cute thing. This is adorable. It was adorable. This is adorable what we do when we're on planes together, which is <laughs> not near, when it's just the two of us. Side by side. Just the two of us. Like right. no children. Yeah. Sorry, kids. This is something that only happens when Adele and I are together. We sink. We sit when we sit next to each other on a plane and you've got the, the flight yep. is long enough that you got the screen. We have our two little screens. You got your in-flight yeah. entertainment. And we have our fingers hovered in the air we above do. the screen. And we can't do a countdown so that we touch the screen at the same time so that we're always starting each scene in the movie at the mm. same time. Yes. Yeah, so we're watching the movie at the same time on two right. different screens. Yes. And two different sets of headphones. Exactly. And uh, anyway, we did that for the, that movie. But to my horror... Yeah. I'd already watched fucking Rumor Has It oh, before. And that was I, the crazy thing is you made up this whole I'm, rule. Yes. We can't watch anything that we've already seen, which made me really mad. Okay. Because I like to, when I'm on an airplane, I don't love flying. And I like to have things that are familiar and comforting to me, like Notting Hill, Bridget Jones Diary, two I, movies I've seen many times. Could I see them again and again? I said no. Yes. I said no. Those I are said, quality no. romantic I said, comedies. I cannot watch that movie again. Oh. I don't like watching movies more than one time, unless the movie is Raising Arizona. I know, but well, the, I love that movie too. I'm just saying, I could. It's not fair. It wasn't fair, and then and then then I felt like a real dick about it <laughs> because yeah, because I was like, a dick oh, about it. let's watch this Jennifer Aniston piece of you know movie this rom-com we mm -hmm. had we had really good luck with a rom some rom oh, oh my god fantastic really good luck. fantastic on our, our rom flight out our flight out to salt lake city utah we watched i can't even call i mean can you call it, it a rom-com he's not that into you is that what he's that? just not that into you no, or he's not know. that into you or he probably isn't into he's, you he's, he certainly <laughs> is not into you <laughs> that movie kind of a masterpiece of rom comery I have to say, pretty good. Rom com, rom, rom, rom comedy, a dramedy. It was a romantic comedy drama. It was so poignant. It was so fucking poignant. At points, 
that you almost didn't want to just call it a rom-com. Exactly. That feels beneath it. And there's nothing wrong with a rom-com. But a rom-drum. this was rom-drum. Rom-drum. Rom-dramedy. Wow. It was that good. movie, if you want to have a quality. That got me fucking stoked. Mm-hmm. And Jennifer Aniston was in that one, too. And, yeah, she was in that one. She was great. And, of course, again, ageless. In her I know. Eyes. In her eyes. She was, uh, he's maybe not that into you, and then rumor has it, same, same, same. She's the same. I yeah. don't know. Same age, same time. So, I have no idea. So, on the flight back from Salt Lake City, Utah, mm-hmm. I was like, well, let's watch this Jennifer Aniston movie. <laughs> and... Because I thought I hadn't seen it. And you had not seen it. What did we watch before that? We watched something serious and then we watched something We watched We watched the Guy Ritchie movie. Oh, which we decided we actually liked after we sat with it. The Gentleman. I I liked it more when it was over. It was weird. I I, I had fond memories of it almost immediately after watching it. I I know. We did. We enjoyed. if If you're on an airplane and The Gentleman is a veil, watch it. Are you, are you hanging up on us now? Is this the end of the episode? No, we're oh. fucking... This I was one, like, what are you in here? You're no. doing the themes that you're just... No, I'm just... Twiddling the strings. No. Yeah, oh, is, but sorry, go back to what you're saying tasteful. now about the... This is like, this is like classy <laughs> shit. <laughs> what were you saying about... We started the movie then, on the and airplane. Then, and then I had... I, to my horror. <laughs> horror! Uh-huh. I mean, really, just like, oh God, what have I done? I've already seen this fucking movie. <laughs> and, and I was like, I remember the beginning because it starts off kind of strong. It's like, hey, here we go. Rom-com time. Jennifer oh, Aniston. Again, I mean, Paul Rudd is also in it who we like too, right? No. Is that Paul Rudd? He was, oh, shit. Now I'm getting no. them all confused. Holy fuck. No, because now we're, we're de- derailed. No, I know, now we I'm are sorry. Like, well, no, they were in Wanderlust together. I got confused. Not Paul Rudd. Sorry. Uh, she's she's made many. St- Mark Ruffalo. Mark, Mark Ruffalo. Ruffalo. Again, this is Jennifer. This is a very familiar <laughs> thing. Jennifer Aniston. She's in. She's about to get married, or somebody's gonna get married, or and she's at this crossroads in her life, and some events, and she's on a plane, and there she's going someplace, and something's gonna happen, and yeah. there's her boyfriend. He's he's lovable. Or not, and here's you know, and it's, it's the same thing. But then it was just this path, and I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm going into a tunnel. Oh god, it's a tunnel. It's like an endless tunnel. I've already seen this fucking movie. It's too late to stop because now you're on board, right? And then as the horror of that movie, and here's the as other it thing. Unfolded. There's an interesting. Here's an interesting fact. Mm. One other movie that I've watched several times and could probably watch again, Spinal Tap. This is Spinal Tap. I was just going to say, of course you were going to say Spinal Tap. I was waiting for Spinal Tap to come out of your mouth. Check this out. What? Did you pick up on this? Fun fact. Rob Reiner directed that fucking piece of shit movie, Rumor Has It. Rob Reiner. What else? You're taking my breath away. Spinal Tap. Yes. (laughs) He fucking directed Spinal Tap, which is a masterpiece. I mean, not not entirely because of him. It's an ensemble cast that, you know, (laughs) brilliant ensemble cast Mm -hmm. Um, with Christopher Guest, who scares me. Yes. He scares me. He's absolutely terrifying. He seems like a guy who wouldn't have a problem being a dick about it. Yeah. (laughs) It seems like Withering is like his middle name. Yeah, he would have no problem being a dick about it. Mm -hmm. About what? I I don't, anything. I fear him. Yeah. I fear his humor. Don't ever, I don't even ever need to share like a, like a passing by him in a hallway space. I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in his bubble. Are you going to sing your song? Oh, yeah, maybe this is a good time to do that. I think that. this is a good sign for you to just shut your trap hole with all your opinions and your Let's dick, talk dicking more. about. Here's, here's, here's a phrase I've heard. Slinging your dick about. Let's just. It's a phrase I've heard many, many times in my life. Um, let's talk more rock. <laughs> oh, you're, you don't say. Yeah. You've heard that before? I don't know. Maybe some people saw my band Sebado. Mm-hmm. Um, boy. We could really go on and on. <laughs> and people would say to you, less talk, more rock from yeah. the audience. I've had people, I've had people, <laughs> people who've guested my, uh, you know, hosted, excuse me, hosted my solo shows. Uh-huh. 
who were really excited to have me playing for them. This is recently, you know. But then they'll recount sometime seeing Sebado and saying, I was really angry. You wasted my time. Oof. I, it, me and my friends drove five hours. Ooh, okay. You know, from rural mm-hmm. Illinois to your show in Chicago. <sighs> uh-huh. uh-huh. And you fuckers were like, played like three songs <laughs> in an hour. Uh-huh. So what you're saying is Sebado was not like reliable back in the day. Well, then you're, you know, you're kind of like part of a grand tradition of other great bands like The Replacements, another deeply unreliable show. Let's not mention Sebado and The Replacements. Why? In the same sentence. Why? The Replacements were like a really classic rock band. Well, I just meant for being unreliable on stage. You don't have to be a dick about it. (laughs) And often, (laughs) I played shows where I was a dick about it. Yeah. That's what I hear. People still like to, I saw you and you were a dick. (laughs) Yeah, okay. I was a dick 30 years ago. I'm so sorry. I had a hard day. I just, uh, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I had a hard day. I think we were all dicks about 30 years ago. I had to. It was required. I I was the intermediary. I had to like, I had to talk my tour manager and my guitar roadie through a fight. (laughs) It was a hard day for me. And then I was a dick about it on stage. (laughs) All right, this is out for Thomas, right? Thomas Morgan? Yes. And we're not going to be a dick about it, Thomas. We love you. On fire, just for you. My opinion could change today. I'm responsible anyway For second, third hand information That complicates the complication And I don't think before I speak And I don't know how far my words reach So wrong nearly every time That I'm sorry I speak what I said was unkind Now it feels like I'm on fire These words are not the truth Don't you hold it against me I know you're lying too my headphones for the second verse. Mm-hmm. So I'm rolling. Keep it going. I'm not fucking it up. All right. Yeah, don't get so cocky. Look at you. I know I was all cocky. Did you see yeah, me? I did. Did you see the cock? I did. <laughs> I did. I did. It was like wild. It was, it was like a wild asparagus that just sprouted right up. Well, I figured, you know. Started swinging around. The best performers, like Henley. Uh-huh. They got a bit of the cock. They do. Yeah. And I, I try to put on the cock. Well, maybe, I it's strap because on the cock. maybe it's because they're full-time cock, and you try to go part-time cock, and it's like if you maybe went full-time cock... Yeah. Full-time you, cock. You would be like, you'd just barrel on through. It would be amazing. All right. Yeah, finish it. Second verse. <laughs> totally different than the first. <laughs> Is there any need for apology? There's no reason to believe me. Judgments born of my jealous mind are creeping inside outside. Connections I've made never follow through, and sooner or later disappoint you. I'll cross you twice when your back is turned. That's how I've learned. It's 
Someone has got to be burned And now it feels like I'm on fire These words are not the truth Don't you hold it against me I know you're lying too It feels like I'm on fire And it's burning the world through But don't let me fall Without someone to hold on to Someone to hold on to Someone to hold on to Mm. Okay Figured it out. Oh, yeah, I figured it out. I mean, All right. Yeah. How'd that feel? <clears throat> How did it feel? Mm-hmm. Less than perfect. Mm. Okay. Less than perfect. Mm. Do you want to do it again? What? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no, I, this is the spirit of the episode. Let it rip, baby. We've breached the one hour. One, the half hour. What? I was like, we've talked for an hour? We've breached the half hour. Oh, well, this is it then, wrapping it up. Are we wrapping it up? Let's wrap it up. <clears throat> I'd just like to say one more time. Yes. That tomorrow, today, unless there's twerking uh-huh. later, <laughs> um, <laughs> today is one of my least favorite days. Yeah, you want to... Let's end on that sour note. I want to do it. Let's dark. This is like Let's go real dark. This is I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow, and although it, it's more than likely mm-hmm. going to be going to be a perfectly fine tour. Oh, it has nothing to do with whether or not you'll have a great time and how you know wonderful it's going to be. It's just hard the day before you leave. For it something is. so big, it just everything like all of our circuits get all like. Yeah, I get really. Buzzy. Yeah. My contact, my my right eye. The last two days, I'm just, I'm bitching about something random now, but every time I put that contact in, it, it hurts. And so then I have to take it out and throw it away. And I think, gosh, why, why, what's happening? And you, and you have a headache. And I have a headache. A possible aneurysm. That was my assumption. That's the other thing too. This is one, one thing I want to explain about these days before and the day of is mm-hmm. that my catastrophe thinking really kicks in. Yes. And I get really melodramatic. Me too. It's like I, la, like this morning, <laughs> this morning I was like lying in bed doing my breathing to calm myself down, which I do every day, actually. Mm-hmm. It's part of my routine. Um, I thought, I need to get those wills signed. We need to find ourselves a notary public. Uh. Get those wills. I really think that way. I think like... This could be it. Yeah. Goodbye. Well, I said I, goodbye and I love you when my <clears throat> headache started kicking in today because I was like, well, this is clearly the end. I'm having yeah, a brain aneurysm. I know. It just like becomes like, re- everything becomes really like, mm, <sighs> it like, it becomes very, everything is like the last time. The I do. hate that, by the way. I hate that. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's just one way life likes to keep us on our toes. Yeah. I mean, in a way, we're lucky... I'm not, the, not that we only do it before I leave on tour because we really do it at different, you know, different levels almost every day. But I've been, I've had points in my life where I felt that every day, mm. you know, where I just was like, you know, mm-hmm. there they go. I may never but see them again. But dark thing is around the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Imminent death syndrome. That's a, <sighs> a, 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 a term coined by David Cross and Bob Odenkirk. I on some episode, I'm not the kind of guy that remembers like episodes. Like, here, let me, let me recount the entire episode. You know, mm. it's on season three of Mr. Show. I don't fucking know. All I know is they did this one thing mm-hmm. about a character who had something called imminent death syndrome, which I thought was fucking brilliant. And I spent a lot of my life with IDS yeah. and imminent death syndrome. 
Okay. Well, on that upbeat note, uh, everything's going to be great and smooth. And you'll sail as if you're on like the wings of a butterfly across the sea, across the ocean to Europe, and you're going to rock the stage and people are going to, and it's going to be great. And Get ready to see my socks. You're going to eat delicious food as you always do in Europe and you're going to enjoy the condiments and the room temperature cheese and the bread and the butter and the meats and the mayonnaise and the mustard and the that's it and the water <laughs> <laughs> this water is delicious mm. Mm-mm. you're going to remember to stay hydrated so if you're playing a festival in the sun no Adele told me to, to stay hydrated today and I'm like baby doll well, I'm like Mr. I've been Mr. Hydration okay well guess who was just with you for, deca- and for a decade a decades. and you felt sick after you got oh! off the stage Mr. that's true I and was and you were like oops I was dehydrated it's hard you know you tense take, well since you won't be I mean that's because you were with me and I was like you know I, wanna, I was more interested in your hydration. Oh, really? So, I was, okay. It's hard, you know, when you're with me, I care more about you <laughs> than I so do So you myself. weren't taking care of yourself? You were not staying hydrated? Uh, nope. I was, I was thinking about you. Oh, okay. You got water, baby? <laughs> <laughs> well, are, are you hydrated? Oh, I think I was dehydrated as well. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hungry? Mm. Are you hungry, baby? Mm. No, you were... That was great. That was great. That was fucking great. I loved being with you. Let's think about that. And this is going to be great. And I'm going to get through this time here in Greenfield. And you're going to chase all around Europe and have a good time. And say hi to some people and... We'll record the podcast apart, so don't worry, we'll keep doing it, y'all. Till next time. Give me all your raw impressions. Talk, talk, talk. Raw impressions.